And we're back live from Innovation Alley. I'm with Kerry Stevenson, Michael Laguerre, Howdy. myself, Chris Johnson, and our special guest is Dan Blair. I've uh, been on the podcast already uh, in the past. Isn't not so special now. Uh, I'm not more so special. special. More special. Yeah. I'm always here. <laughs> I think he's wearing the same shirt today. That's yeah, right. He's true. a pretty same little same shirt. So, uh, so today, what are we talking about? We're talking about the ACE Project Space, which is an, initi- an initiative of Red River College. Uh, Dan has been uh, an instrumental part of sort of helping to uh, shape the vision of ACE, and then not only that, but put boots on the ground and execute it. So why don't we start there? Dan, what's the 15-second the pitch on what is an ACE project? Great. So basically, it's a project that brings the students to industry and helps them build their skills, work with a startup, and uh, actually like build real, real, wor- real world skills. Cool. Uh, I happen to know a few startups. Um, Tell me, have any of the startups that I know, uh, have they engaged in, in, in an ACE project at this point? How many projects have you guys kicked out? So um, traditionally, the project space was working on uh, more of like a lar- like more with larger organizations and less with startups. Um, it's f- a fairly new initiative that uh, the ACE department is trying to work with startups. So we are actually piloting that with them where we are, I guess the f- panel play is the first... Uh, the first startup project that not only is working with the space, but actually started with the space. So panel play as an idea started with students in the space where they were the first developers working on the idea. And we worked with the students to mentor them and help them build their skills. They were exposed to the whole like ups and downs of starting a company. So they got to actually like watch me figure out how to, you know, register a business and start an actual, you know, company with them. Mm -hmm. Um, and they went from the initial idea planning phase to actually initiating and building. So, so what do you think happens afterwards? So these students go through this thing and they learn all the stuff that you just explained. But are they going to show up on your doorstep next week uh, looking for a job? Or maybe are they going to start their own firm? I think the, the idea is, um, I mean, these students, they're, they still have a, a semester. So there, it is their, uh, their, their work term. And I did my uh, my work term as a co-op. So there are two different ways. They can work with a company, they can get paid, and they can and do all that, or they can intern with a company in the project space. In one sense, you're you know you're working, you're paid as a job. Um, and the other way, you're actually you're working, and you might be working on something a little more experimental, more R and D. Like we were trying to get them working with virtual reality. So the the answer is like it, it could very well be that yeah later they would come back and and hope to have a job, and the the goal would be that. Now I'm at a point, position where I can help them out. Or they might have an idea themselves, and they might come back and, and work with the space. Or they might graduate on to, you know, Innovation Alley. They start working in Site A where they get themselves a desk. And now they have an idea. They've lived through the start of a company or they've worked with a startup through their work term. And now they also have the practical skills to start building that idea. So we're kind of helping students become a little more entrepreneurial, expose them to that ecosystem from the beginning and give them the t- skills that they need to be a developer um, since they are coming through the, the business information technology program. Excellent. The, uh, you know, the, the talk about those next steps, like when, when, when the students come out, I, I think one of the big things um, I, I found really exciting to see out of the, out of the program and actually on the tour a couple of weeks ago with you, Dan, is that um, you know the way the students are engaging? They they're they really they don't think of themselves as students. Like they're they're in a they're in a business. No, they they're shouldn't. working on a project. Exactly. That confidence level uh, was uh, just amazing to see. And um, what what I hope to see over the next year here is that that transition progresses where. You know, we go from eight to ten folks that have come through in the last little bit to, uh, you know, 20, 30, 60, 100 out in the alley here uh, doing different projects. Um, you know, from if I'm someone, you know, I'm, I'm in high school, I'm looking at going into university or college right away. Uh, I'm not necessarily super excited about spending all my time in classes. How how far into a Red River program, you know, would I be have to, to get access to the ACE program? Is it my like third year, fourth year, so, first yeah. month in? With with BIT, um, it's a two and a half year program unless you do IBIT. So yeah. if you do the introductory course, then it is slightly longer. But you basically work your way through three semesters of classroom, and then you have those initial skills which are necessary. But yeah. then you actually get to apply that in a real world situation. So whether you're working with co-op or with the uh, the project space, 
um, you get to actually do hands-on learning. And from my experience, because I did graduate from this program, is it, it's the best part. I mean, you can sit and learn and, you know, you're going to do little projects in class. But once you actually go out and actually start working, I mean, on my co-op, I learned more about business and uh you know, the office place, as well as, you know, development practices, you know, programming and all that. I learned more in my project term and my co-op term than the three semesters beforehand. So they build up that foundation, but it isn't until you actually start working in the field that you're going to start to, like, actually realize the things you didn't really like learning in the classroom were actually very important. And uh, all about the things that can't even they're, they're so new they can't even be in the in the program so with the space one of the things we do is we throw the students into a situation where they're working with modern development practices they're working with source control they're we're using agile scrum project management so they're learning in a very flat organization so they have responsibilities they're taking responsibility for their tasks they're tracking all that through you know source control regardless of the project you know we can see their git history we can see everything that they're doing. So from my point of view, coming back and working with the students, I get to see, you know, mentoring them, where are they growing, which can directly be given back to the ACE department so they can see, you know, they built that foundation, this is what they learned, and now that's being translated later. So so if I'm a startup uh, and I'm uh, in Innovation Alley or anywhere, um, what, what does it look like for us? Like when does this, when does it become a tangible thing that uh, startups should care about? Like when are they, do you know uh, when the program will be opened up for applications? Let's say, is there an induction process? Uh, that's something that's currently being discussed right now. So, okay. um, I can't myself say when that will be, but, uh, why not just soon, say, uh, just say the and they'll idea, make it happen. They'll have to, <laughs> they'll have to cause it'll be, <laughs> it'll be live. But, uh, yeah. I mean, we're just the, just the beginning. So, I mean, it's kind of like I came into a, a situation which was already good for students and try to improve that but we're the pro the pilot right so you know fight figuring out what works what doesn't work and the idea is later that you know students be working with multiple different companies so the idea is like you could become a startup on innovation alley and work with the college to you know uh help students grow their knowledge as well as you know kickstart your your own idea yeah, that's cool. We we actually uh, permission click actually right now this week has a uh, an intern from Crecom and uh, and we're thrilled with the experience, like loving it. Yeah. Um, you know, tried to make sure, but it it does take a little bit of work on behalf of the startup, uh, doesn't it? Where you can't just have them come in and sit and bang their head at a desk. Yeah, certainly, it's uh, that struggle to find something meaningful, right? So, like for example, in my point of view, I don't just come in and tell the students what to do and leave. You know, I, I come in and I, I'm actively mentoring them. So I'm working with the students. They can come to me with questions and they can say, I don't really understand how we're building this module. Can you explain, you know, this part of the code or can you think of a better way to implement this? And since I am a developer myself, I can actually, you know, sit and help them. So there is that knowledge transfer happening where the students are growing and learning from me. And I'm also, you know, learning while mentoring them. So. Yeah. Well, what I'm driving at is uh, I think a lot of a lot of internships and co-ops can be a failure sometimes because the company doesn't realize that it you takes a whole them. bunch of investment. Yeah. Like when you get a, you get someone come in, it's like, oh, great. I got a free person for three weeks or six yeah, weeks. It's not just like no, getting it, free people. It's yeah, you're, you're putting actively cycles working in. with them. And yeah. Um, it, with the right mentor and the right student, it can be very valuable because, you know, you get the right person who's willing, the right student who's willing to learn and the right mentor who's willing to help them grow. I mean, you're going to have a tremendous experience if you're just coming in and expecting that people are just going to do work for you. I mean, it's not worth it for the students, but it's also not worth it for you. Yeah. So is there a way to identify those kinds of situations? Like, I, I'm, I'm sure there would be some companies that would, you know, essentially abuse the system. Um, uh, like, you know, can you decide to send it out to uh, uh, contract work or or do this? Like, well, how do you make like, that decision? So with my company, I do have work that does is done by contractors. Um, I try to identify tasks since I came through the program myself. I try to identify tasks that would be, you know, suitable for a student instead of just saying, build this thing and I'll come back later. I try to identify things like as a student myself, what would have been a reasonable thing. Now, because we work in a scrum manner at you know, my company Bitspace, where we take a large task and we already break it up into small chunks. So a large daunting task for a student say like, hey, implement this, you know, 360 viewer. Now, actually, it's like implement this small chunk and this chunk and this chunk. And then they keep building off of that. And they've before they know it, they've iteratively developed this <laughs> impressive thing. Like, you know, we're we're so close to adding that 360 video support. And I know what needs to be done to finish it. 
but I'm watching one of my students in particular wrestle with it, and he's so close. So, I, you know, I give him a nudge, and I say, you know, you want to do it in this way. So, you know, this is going to be true for internships anywhere, mm-hmm. not just in the project space. So, you know, any company in the States that's taking on interns, if you're not, you know, prepared to teach them, what's the point in taking them? You know, there is that, yeah. that transfer going on there. So It's awesome. So yeah. the... So- so so we'll we'll give it to Mike for one final question and then we'll uh, we'll wrap. No, I was going to wrap. Oh, we are we're out of time. But uh, <laughs> as a student, uh, I, you know, so again, if you're you're interested in this kind of uh, of work, you know, contact Red River. You know, talk about the ask about the ACE uh, project space. Yeah, talk about the bit the bit program. It's uh, you know. It's it's unique. It's it's you're going to get those computer science fundamentals where you're learning about programming and development, but you're going to get access to working with business. It's hugely worth it. Yeah, and you know it's kind of funny because uh, you know as uh, an employer, um, I had nothing but good experiences with with the folks coming out of Red River. So it's uh, uh, you know it, there's an awesome opportunity if you're you're getting involved from a student perspective, if you're a business. Uh, looking and interested in getting more involved, uh, you know, this is the right time, right? The pilot is essentially uh, starting to wrap up, so they're, they're looking for new companies. They're looking to, to take this to the next level so they can get in contact uh, with Red River there as well. And, um, you know, we look forward to, uh, to, to talking more about this and getting more of those programs uh, out onto the alley. So thanks a lot, Dan, for, for letting us know what it is and, uh, and, and how folks can get involved. Thank you.